Peripheral Component Interconnect Express, or PCIe, is a computer expansion bus standard used for connecting the majority of system hardware components, including graphics cards. But it wasn't always the standard interface for these devices. Let's talk about the history of PCI Express. Let's start by talking about some of the older standards for connecting peripheral components. First, ISA, or Industry Standard Architecture. Great name. This was the first standard bus for add-on PC components, created in 1981. Now, ISA used an 8 or 16-bit bus, which means 8 or 16 bits could be transferred at a time. Now, the speed of the bus depended on the system bus. Now, the processor bus, or system bus, same thing, is a single bus connecting all of the parts of a processor, including memory, CU, and ALU. Now, for more information on those, check out my How Computers Work video. So, whatever speed the CPU ran at, the ISA bus ran in sync. It could connect up to six devices and reach speeds up to eight megabytes per second, again, depending on the bus speed. Future versions of the ISA, including EISA, were created with up to 32-bit buses, but never caught on quite as well as ISA or other later standards. The next major bus standard was PCI, the direct ancestor to PCIe, obviously, and successor to ISA. Now, this standard was created in 1992, and its key advantage was that this bus was independent of the processor bus. Now, the PCIe bus can operate at its own speeds, and devices have their own addresses and appear in the system to be on their own buses to connect them to the rest of the computer. But PCI did have its own downsides. Even though they did not appear this way to the system, all PCI devices shared a bus with each other. Now this was way better than sharing it with the whole system, obviously, but it still had issues. Now, for example, PCIe speeds are limited to the slowest connected components capable speeds. Now PCI operated on 32 or 64 bit bus widths, with a few speed options depending on bus width and bus speed. Now this is where the advantage of a separate bus really comes in. So a 32 bit bus width at 33 megahertz bus speed could go up to 133 megabytes per second transfer speeds, much faster than ISA already. 32 bit 66 megahertz or 64 bit 33 megahertz could do 266 megabytes per second and 64 bit at 66 megahertz could do 533 megabytes per second transfer speeds. Way faster than eight megabytes per second all around. Now, PCI was not the only predecessor to PCIe. There was also AGP, or Accelerated Graphics Port, created in 1996. It operated on similar principles to PCIe, but provided its own high-speed bus connection to the CPU, which was increasingly important with the development of 3D graphics. Now, GPUs, or graphs, graphics processing units, would need to have much faster access to the rest of the system to be able to handle these workloads. AGP offers speeds of up to 2,133 megabytes per second on a 32-bit bus. It achieved this by giving each individual device a direct bus connection to the processor instead of sharing with other devices, like with PCI. AGP also simplified many parts of the PCI protocol to suit the specific kinds of hardware that it was meant for, like graphics cards, hence the name Accelerated Graphics Port. And for a good while, PCI and AGP were found concurrently on most systems. But now PCI Express has replaced them both. Developed in 2003, PCIe brings some of the AGP improvements to the PCI standard, including the direct CPU connection to replace the shared bus nature of conventional PCI. PCIe devices connect to the CPU via a number of lanes, commonly ranging from 1 to 16. The number of lanes a device uses, or that a motherboard slot provides, will dictate the number of physical pins. A 1x, or a by one or a single lane connection uses 36 pins, while a 16x, or a by 16 a 16 lane connection, uses 164 pins. Now, a device requiring less lanes can fit into a larger slot and still work, but not vice versa. Essentially, if it can physically fit into the slot, the system will recognize how many lanes it needs, and it will work. PCIe had several revisions over the years. 1.0 came in 2003, with transfer rates of 2.5 gigatransfers per second, which translates to 
four gigabytes per second on a full by 16 connection. PCIe 2.0 came in 2007 with transfers of five gigatransfers per second or eight gigabytes per second with by 16. PCIe 3.0 came in 2010 with eight gigatransfers per second or 15.8 gigabytes per second with by 16 connection. Now 3.0 is the most commonly used today most Intel and AMD platforms will support PCIe 3.0. But now we have PCIe 4.0, which was officially released in 2017 with 16 gigatransfers per second at 31.5 gigabytes per second on a full by 16 connection. Now 4.0 should become much more common with AMD releasing compatible systems for consumers sometime this year, 2019. 5.0 is also expected to become official sometime this year with 32 gigatransfers per second or 63 gigabytes per second on a full by 16 connection, but don't expect to see that in any systems for a little while. Now, due to all of these features and advantages, PCI Express is the high speed standard for connecting additional hardware devices in modern computers including graphics cards, storage, NICs and network interface cards, and even USB controllers, all at very high speeds. And it'll be exciting to see what improvements come next. Well, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to see more cool videos like this one. If you have any questions, anything to say, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at SolidStateTweet for the first updates on absolutely everything. And I will see you guys in the next one.